Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode of A Perfectly Crazy Life. Sit back and enjoy as we make beef goulash. Happy Sunday everybody. How's everyone's week been? How's your weekend been? The sun's finally just coming out here. It's been raining all day. So it's been kind of a, we pretty much just laid around and done not a whole lot other than some laundry and some, had to get a few groceries for the week. So I am going to be making today, so the first challenge of mine, so this is my Viennese cookbook that I bought when we were in Austria. It's all translated in English with lots of good pictures, sorry. And so for supper, we're going to be making beef goulash with bread dumpling. So we'll see how that goes. I'm hoping because when I had it there, it was absolutely amazing and I got this book from it was a very authentic restaurant that we were taken to. So I'm gonna, I'm only putting gloves on because my hands are very dry from being in and out of water so they get cracks on them and it doesn't pair well with onions. So you gotta read this. So for this recipe you need um, onion, paprika, tomato paste, beef bouillon. I have beef broth so hopefully that'll be okay. Uh, it says sunflower oil. I'm using olive oil and vinegar. I'm assuming that looks like apple cider vinegar, but I only have white vinegar, so I'm using that. Um, pepper, marjoram. I got that. Garlic and then caraway seed. I don't have that, so I'm going to leave it out and hopefully that'll still work. And it looks like this needs to stew for a few hours on the stove, so that's why I'm trying to get it done a little bit early. So, Mind you, I'm sure that two of the the people in this house will not eat it or try it, but we'll, we'll go for it. <laughs> and as you can hear, the kids in the background are Maya has discovered roller coasters in 3D on the iPad. So that keeps her, is keeping her interested at the moment. They've actually been playing all day, like well together, which sometimes can be surprising. So I didn't have all white onion and I forgot to put it on the list for the store and I'm obviously not gonna make Jeremy go back to the store for one ingredient. So I'm gonna use a white onion and red onion and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like it's a quite fine dice. So I'll get all this diced up and then we'll get it on the stove. is there's so many different tips and tricks and stuff like that. They say refrigerate, freeze, or not freeze, don't freeze the onion, but like get it really cold to cut it. Honestly, the best part about, or the easiest tip is to make sure your knife is super sharp and not dull. And mine is, like I said, I think in one of the other videos, I still need to sharpen it. And I just haven't. But the problem is, see, when you're pressing on the onion, is if it's not super sharp, it's gonna push down and the spray from the onion, the juice is gonna fly up and that's what it is that hits you. And that's what gets your eyes watering. Like mine right now. That's honestly the best thing that I can tell you that actually works. I find the age of the onions makes a big difference too on how strong they are. There's a million different tips out there. Try them, see what works best for you. This is not the best dicing job, but they are gonna cook down, so. Okay, so, onion, fry and oil till brown. So I'm gonna take some oil and pop it in my pan here. This is my favorite pan in the whole world. It was my grandmother's and I remember her cooking everything in this pan. And I love using this because it's so solid. It just heats everything perfectly. It reminds me of my grandma. She cooked. I did a lot of baking and cooking with her and my grandpa. So. Good to have memories like that. Okay, so I'm gonna put that aside, but we'll wait that for that oil to heat up, and then we're gonna add in 
tomato paste and it looks like the paprika. I cooked that briefly. This is what the end product is supposed to look like. And if it does, this is absolutely amazing. So good. And it looks like it's like a tomato based sauce, but it's not. It's just cooked down so nicely. All right, so we're gonna bring the onions over to the pot. I got the, and I will uh, we'll put the link down below how to get these. These are Amazon ordered cutting boards, and mind you, I've only used them for a couple of days now, but I love them. They come in a set of four, and I think they were like 15 bucks. And they're flexible, and they're dishwasher, like pop them in the dishwasher. And so far are working great and I love them and they're light and they don't take up space. So you get four of them, they're color coded, have vegetable, beef, chicken, and fish, I think. So those were a great buy. And got here in like two days, so that was awesome. That was one thing we were lacking in is cutting boards. Get these starting to brown. I don't want to get them too boxed out in the front line, but I'll get those sauteing down and I guess while I do that I can chunk up the uh or dice up the beef I see they just extended Ontario schools um are definitely gonna be out until at least the 31st of May yes yeah um which doesn't surprise me I honestly can't see them going back before September anyways So what else have you been doing to uh, use your time at home? I've been doing some decluttering. I'm trying to get rid of stuff that I do not need, which is very hard for me because I do like to keep things. I'm just gonna get rid of this quickly. But I have been decluttering. I cleaned up my pantry, which I'm really proud of. So I got that all nice and organized. Did all my drawers, all my cupboards. Hmm. Still got a lot of stuff to, I want to do, but whether or not I have the ambition to do it all the time, I don't know. I didn't go to work today. Decided not. We just kind of have been hanging out here. Normally I have a garbage bowl, which would make more sense right now rather than bringing this. Okay, so this piece here, and you'll find this on even like you'll find this on pork and and stuff as well this silvery stuff is called ironically silver skin that is tough you cannot chew through that if you try so you want to cut that off but again because i have yet to sharpen my knives see how it it's like that is tough like that will not break down so you want to try and get all that off and you can definitely tell the difference when you see regular fat in the silver skin see that is more regular fat this is the silver skin underneath the fat will render this will not do anything I find this a lot too there's always a strip on pork tenderloin that you have to really cut off and you want to if i had a better knife i wouldn't be losing as much meat which must be sad but I'm working with what I got at home. Right, so that pretty much takes care of that. Hopefully it wasn't a giant piece. And it will tear off too because that's how strong that is. Like you cannot fight through that. So you definitely don't want to try and chew through that. Alright. So I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. So now I'm just going to dice this up into cubes. Yay! Because this will kind of all break down and break apart while it's simmering this afternoon. So what's everybody's 
morning routine. I developed a morning routine now because I used to get up and I'd fly to work and then come home. Like I'd go to work sometimes at three or four in the morning because I wanted to get stuff done. And then I'd come back and even though I didn't have to, um, Jeremy is perfectly capable of taking care of the kids in the morning, but I always feel better if I get to say goodbye to them before they go to school. So I'll come home and try to help get that situated unless there's something really important that has to get up fast in the morning. Um, but I have found a new routine, so, and I'm hoping this routine will stay with me now. I find I'm more accountable for myself. Like I get up and I make sure in the morning I empty the dishwasher, clean up, wipe the counters down, um, wipe the bathroom down, that kind of thing, and it makes me feel a lot better. I usually try to pick one thing maybe a day to organize or to tackle. Okay, so onions seem to be soft and I am going to add my tomato paste first. It only calls for a tablespoon of tomato paste, so. So, throw this in. I'm gonna do just a touch more than a tablespoon. I don't know. I feel I do too, but okay, get that all mixed together. We need to, it says cook briefly, add paprika, and cook briefly again. So I'm using the paprika, so we'll do four tablespoons. I'm doing just over a tablespoon, it over one of these because this isn't quite a tablespoon, it's just a little bit less than a tablespoon, so that should be pretty close. Okay, so add paprika, cook briefly. Alright. That's where the red color comes from, which I didn't know this when I was eating, because I always thought it was like a tomato-based thing, but it's not very little tomato in it. Alright. So now we're going to add a dash of vinegar. So I do have a big jug of vinegar here, but I have these couple packs of uh, white vinegar. So I might as well just use these up. And then we have to pour in beef broth. So do two packs of white vinegar here. Michael Marcus, I'm sure you're cringing at me right now because I'm sure I'm screwing this up majorly. And vinegar, beef broth, and add remaining seasoning. So, or beef broth, it doesn't say. It says one cube of bouillon or beef broth. But how much beef broth is that? It's gotta be enough to simmer the beef, right? Alright, so we're just gonna add this whole thing and be broth. So that's what I say. It's gonna cook down, so I'm sure it'll thicken up anyway, so. Okay. Do that. And then it says add remainder of the seasonings, which would be the marjoram, which is a teaspoon. I was gonna do a dessert tonight too, but I'm thinking probably not. Because the dumplings I think will take enough time that I'm not gonna I want a dessert. But you don't even know what I was gonna make. Probably something you don't even like. So a teaspoon of marjoram. That would be the kids playing Minecraft again. They get pretty excited about that. Um so garlic, we're gonna add, and I'm cheating, I didn't buy fresh garlic, I wanted just some chopped stuff, so I had it in the fridge anyways, to uh, keep on hand, because we use garlic in mostly everything. So it says three cloves, which I'm gonna say is roughly a teaspoon, or more, wing it. 
So worry, guys, if I'm destroying this. You find out. Uh, the two bay leaves I don't have and the caraway seed I do not have, so we're going to assume we don't really need those. I'm going to drop in some pepper. So a pinch. We'll go with that. And I have some kosher salt here, so we'll throw a nice pinch of that in. So that is the remainder of the seasoning. And the last thing is to just bring the sauce to a boil and add the meat and let it stew for two hours until thickened. And then you can thicken it if you want to. It says you can use flour if desired, or I'm sure you could probably use cornstarch, which is generally what I thicken things with, but that's just me. So we're gonna bring this up to a boil. Smells good. We'll just let that sit for a minute before we add the beef. So this is the goulash that's been on now for about two hours and I'm going to let it go just a little bit longer. The beef is tender and the sauce has thickened up nicely and the whole house smells amazing. Um, yeah, the beef is nice and tender, but I still want to let it go for a little bit. So I'm going to start the dumplings though. So I'm going to take some butter or margarine, whatever you have on hand. And I'm going to throw a couple onions in. It specifies, well, it says white onion or Spanish onion. I'm going to use what I had in the fridge and I want to use up. I had some red onion and green onion, so hopefully that won't make too much of a difference. But I'm just going to use what I have right now because I don't want them to go bad. We'll see what happens. I'm going to let you start browning for a second. And we're going to come over here. And you need 350 grams of bread cubes. So I just took a half loaf of bread. I think our bread loaves were, they were 675 grams from what I read on the package. So I just took about a half a loaf and just broke it up. Um, and then let's see. So then in a separate bowl, so got that broken up. I need to get a separate bowl. Okay, now I'm gonna take three eggs. quarter liter? Yeah. Well, that's 250 milliliters. Which would be a half a cup? Yeah, because 500 milliliters is a cup. Sure. I think. I don't know. Look on one of your... Yeah, we'll just go with it. What did I do? Oh, here's the milk. Okay. 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 Should say on it. On what? On the cup there. I'm pretty sure the red ones have metric on them. Half a cup, okay. So, well, I don't have my one cup red one. Well, what's the... Okay, so 237 mils in a cup. Then you need 250. So I need two cups then, right? No. You said a quarter liter. Yeah. So that'd be 250 50 mils. milliliters. So all you need is 13 okay, so, more milliliters okay, than that. Okay, so just over. Oh dear. Math isn't her strong suit. Nope, not at all. Nor conversion. All right, so we're gonna whisk this together, and we're gonna add a pinch of salt. That I can do. Pinch. So we've got the eggs, milk, and salt together, um, butter, 
is in the pan, onions are browning, and we're gonna pour the milk mixture over the bread. And that's what happens during homeschooling, yep. Um, so, <laughs> it's fun around here. I'm going to add a touch of nutmeg. That's about it, just a little bit, because it doesn't actually say how much. All right, and a couple tablespoons of parsley. So I just, I'm assuming fresh parsley would be better for this, but right now I've got parsley flakes, so I'm going to add a couple tablespoons. Yeah, that looks about right. And then, uh, it doesn't say once you add the onions, I'm pretty sure what the bread key is for some It doesn't say to pour the onions in. It's another 10 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna say we should probably be adding the onions in at this point. Doesn't say that, but I think maybe they skip the part. And then I'm gonna use this same pot to boil the dumplings in. Okay, so then I'm gonna add 50 grams of flour. Again, this is not in. I'm going by the picture. So I'm gonna add, say, roughly just under a quarter cup. Maybe a little bit more. I know, so okay, let's say about a quarter cup. to give this a good stir. Reminds me of just almost like a stuffing, but without like the sage and the like, the, the chicken seasoning and stuff in it. So we're gonna let that sit. It says let it sit for 10 minutes. So we're gonna do that. And then in the meantime, we need to have boiling salted water. Okay, so I just refilled the pan that I sauteed the onions in. I'm gonna put it on high to get it boiling. Here. Throw a pinch of salt in, actually a couple pinches, no, a lot of salt, but nicely salted. Okay. So now we, the dumpling mixture has sat for a good 10 minutes. So I just moistened my hands a little bit. Gonna form some dumpling type things. I'm just setting them in the lid of the pan, just to transport them over to the stove. Or, there's no reason for that really. They smell really good. And once you get that, oh, oh no, I got my book. I'm hoping this is what they're supposed to look like. That's what the book looks like. And I'm sure with the, the red sauce of the goulash, it's gonna be amazing because I tasted it and it does taste really amazing and I can't wait to eat it again and bring back some memories. We had it the first time cooked here for us by Marcus and Michael and then the second time we were in Austria and they brought us to a Viennese restaurant and Oh no, I didn't have it then. It was at a restaurant that we went to on our own that we had had it. 
So now I'm just gonna drop this in the boiling water, which I believe is how you're supposed to do this. With any luck, they hold together. Which I'm sure is what the flower is all about. That's some sort of that's the binding agent in it, I think. Yeah. Well, and we'll hope for the best. Okay, so dumplings or an epic fail on my part. Actually, not too bad. Some of them turned out okay. They didn't hold together, I don't think, as they should have, but I think I have an idea. I think I should have compacted them more. But actually, the broth of this tastes really good. So, like, I know it just looks like wet bread, but the broth is really good. So I'm just gonna drain some of that off. And then this turned out, I'm really happy with this. Turned out so good. So then you pour that over that. Hi guys. Okay, so shh. Three of the kids are playing together fairly well, playing Minecraft. My husband is doing some editing on our last video and I am sneaking away to the bedroom to fold laundry and that is pretty exciting so I'm gonna fold some laundry and watch some YouTube on the TV watch some of my favorite channels which I will list at some point in time um, the channels that I watch and I find interest in and yeah we'll go from there <laughs>